Welcome back for this week's technical. Today we are carrying on with the reproduction theme. If you find these technicals useful, if you enjoy the vlogs and you haven't already, go ahead, click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it. That means you'll get updates, you won't miss anything new coming out from the channel. So many more people watch these videos than I thought would when I started this channel. It's very heartening to see those numbers go up and up. Anyway, let's get into it. Today's topic is sexed semen. This is a relatively young technology. Like many good things, it came out of the 1990s and more recently has come into its own. In this technical, we'll cover some of the fundamentals, how it's made, some of the theory, some of the practice, and some of the relative pros and cons of using it. Artificial insemination has revolutionized animal breeding, especially breeding of dairy cattle. It hasn't quite gained the same traction for beef, sheep, goats and other livestock species with perhaps the exception of pigs, but it is still a very important tool across all of those different sectors. We've talked about fixed time AI in beef cattle, for example, in one of the previous technicals. Sex semen in the UK at least has become a revolution within a revolution. Take a look at this graph and you'll see just how sex semen has come to dominate semen sales in the UK versus conventional. First of all, how's it made? Time for a very quick genetics primer. Sperm are the male sex cells. They carry either an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. A chromosome being the structure on which DNA is carried, DNA the code for life. It's that X or Y status of the sperm that determines the biological sex of the embryo it goes on to form. If that sperm carries an X, the embryo will be XX, that's a biological female if that sperm carries a Y that embryo will end up being an XY that's a biological male at least in mammals remember every embryo inherits an X from its mother that Y chromosome is significantly smaller than the X chromosome this gives the two categories of sperm a different mass if we use a clever machine to apply an electrical charge to a stream of sperm and then we pass that stream of sperm through an electromagnetic field they end up being deflected depending on the X or Y status of that sperm and therefore its mass they get deflected to different extents and so they can be collected at different points package that up and bingo you have your straw of sexed semen this process called flow cytometry was developed by boffins at Colorado State University in the 1990s and has since been refined the biggest use of sex semen has specifically been the use of female sex semen in breeding dairy cattle there are a number of different reasons for this an improving conception rate which we'll touch on later but also a big push by the UK dairy industry to eliminate the euthanasia of male dairy calves. Only a tiny number are needed to act as the studs for the next generation. The remaining males obviously can't enter the milking herd and they offer poor value as beef animals. Consequently, it has been relatively common practice in the past for these calves to be euthanized at a very young age. No one wanted to do that, nobody enjoyed it. It was just a part and parcel of dairy farming for some. However, understandably, there has been a backlash against this and the GB calf strategy developed by the UK dairy industry is aiming to eliminate calf euthanasia by 2020. And there are similar initiatives here in New Zealand to end what they would call the bobby calf trade. Sex semen has been a really important part of that puzzle as 90% of the calves born to female sex semen will be heifers. The dilemma dairy producers found themselves in is that they would have to breed a certain percentage of their dairy cows to dairy semen. That was to generate enough female replacements to enter the dairy herd for the next generation. However, 50% of those calves would end up being males and that led to all the problems we've just discussed. By using female sex semen, these producers can now breed a much smaller percentage of their dairy cows to dairy semen and they can cherry pick the best cows to go to produce their replacements and they can then breed the remaining cows to beef semen. This gives them a much higher value calf which then won't be wasted at an early age. Alternatively, if people are looking to expand a herd rapidly, sex semen can be a relatively good way of doing it without having to buy cows in. Remember this graph? As demand went up, so did the supply of sex semen from different bulls. On the beef side, you can now find both female sex semen again used to breed replacements from some really great cows and male sex semen this is used to provide a bull calf which for beef will probably go on to have a slightly higher value 
than a heifer calf. And much more recently in the UK, we've seen advanced breeding companies starting to offer sex semen, both male and female, for sheep AI. When it actually comes to using it, there are a number of different considerations we have to take into account. Conception rates is the big one. Conception rates are really important in any livestock production system they are often the drivers of profitability. There's no two ways about it. Sex semen has always had a lower conception rate than conventional semen. That does make sense. Semen is an inherently fragile product. Whenever we process it, it does slightly deteriorate. And I'm not aware of any semen company trying to claim equivalence with conception rates of conventional semen. It's also pertinent to remember that sex semen is more expensive than conventional semen and that bull selection can still be quite limited. The decision to use it or not depends on A, the potential payoff of getting a calf of the preferred sex, and B, what are the likely conception rates relative to conventional semen. Over the years, the latter has generally improved to narrow the gap with conventional, to the point now where some semen vendors will claim that sex semen has 90% of the conception rate of conventional. So taking this to be correct, if you were to achieve 60% conception with conventional semen, you would expect to achieve about 54% conception with sex semen. In my admittedly limited experience with using it myself, but also in doing the homework for the technical, 90% is definitely at the upper range of what you should expect. If you're achieving 90% of expected with conventional, I think you're doing very well. You deserve to give yourself a pat on the back. The studies I've looked at have found conception with sex semen to be anywhere from 70 to 85% of the conception you'd expect with conventional semen. And in some studies, there does seem to be a dose dependent response. And by that, I mean, if you stick more sperm in a straw, you can see better conception rates. So if you see the name 4 M applied to any semen products, that means there are 4 million sperm in an individual straw, as opposed to 2M, which you guessed it, contains 2 million sperm per straw. Although this effect isn't borne out by all studies, other factors that seem to affect the gap between conventional and sex semen are cow parity, so the gap seems to be narrower in heifers versus cows. It's different bulls seem to perform differently when sexed, and there's differences between fresh and frozen sex semen. With all of those caveats, you can tell that this is a young technology because the science is changing all of the time. Rather than try and give you some specific recommendations, which are probably going to be out of date in a year, what I would suggest is if you're going to use sex semen for the first time, or if you're already using it and you're looking to improve your conception rates, A, go and talk to your vet, hash out the details with them, and B, take a look at some of the information in the links in the video description. What is clear, at least for cattle, is that to achieve the best results, this isn't business as usual. For example, sex semen seems to have a shorter window of effectiveness, so this can affect the timings of service relative to heat detection. Cow or heifer selection also appears to be paramount. Setting yourself up to win, say, by picking heifers that have reached an adequate size and are clearly cycling, not trying to AI cows with sex semen who have struggled to get in calf before, not those who are struggling with mastitis or any other health issues. These should be females which are otherwise good candidates. And note that if studies use this same selection criteria, that can artificially narrow the gap between sexed and conventional semen. Because if you serve your most fertile animals with sexed and your least fertile with conventional, you're going to artificially improve the conception rates to your sex semen and artificially depress the conception rates to your conventional semen. And finally, all the rules that apply to good handling and management of conventional semen apply doubly to sex semen. This is an especially fragile product. To get the best out of it, it needs to be handled with care. So that is a quick primer on sex semen. If you want more information, as I said, go and collar your vet. I've put some links I thought you might find useful in the video description. Like any technology, this is going to be suitable for different farms in different ways for different reasons. To get the most out of sex semen, there's going to have to be some very careful planning. Now, if you found that interesting, helpful, entertaining, enlightening, and you haven't already subscribed, click that subscribe button. I promise you won't regret it. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, let me know what you thought. Otherwise, I will see you next time.